screen. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. I am, this is going to be covering a Google Chrome. You know, I think you have to use Google Chrome in this. And Google has just released this. This is, is since, uh, you know, I started developing these slides in late July, August is when the first version, and then I edited them in September, and then I edited them once more before I was showing. And this was released in September. It's called Search Generative Experience. And what you're going to be looking for, and it changes. I hope that this all works live as we go through this, but it changes. And what you're going to be looking for is this beaker from Google Labs. This icon takes you to the Google search generative experience. This icon takes you to Google's products, the Google Docs, etc. And here's your ID, and it's up in the upper right-hand corner in Google Chrome. So when we get to see this Google search generative experience products, this is what we're going to be turning on within the Google Chrome browser. You can turn on generative experience within Google search. You can turn on Google search, uh, generative experience while browsing and in code. Well, I'm not going to do that. That's I use that. I'm experimenting with that, but I don't think we have any coders, computer coders, or in Google Sheets, which is their equivalent of Excel. So we're going to turn these on and off. And you turn that by clicking it to the right here. And we're going to turn these two on as we go through these slides. So in Google Chrome on a browser, this is where it's going to get a little confusing as we switch from browser to uh, a smartphone, but in a browser on a computer, go to labs.google, not labs.google.com, just labs.google in the Chrome browser only, and you'll see something like this. Notice up here at the top, labs.google. Notice that the little beaker is not here. So you'll scroll down the screen. Here, this is all just kind of marketing material. You'll scroll down till you see help shape the future and you'll click on get started. In there, you'll see all of these and you'll turn those features on. Notice how I turn them on. And then this is where I think I get a little. Now you can reload. There's this little symbol up here in the upper left hand corner, which is le reload the, the website. You can go to www.google.com and the beaker should show up. That's what we're looking to get. This information up here, if this shows up and there's something okay. else on the screen, it, it's under your ID, it's a know your customer, Google is doing it. And then down in the middle is try AI powered overviews when you search. And then you go to this screen and you enter in a prompt, and you can put in a graphic request. What did I put in there? It says on the right side, the image on the right side, please create a clear glass sphere without pedestal with low light from the front left and a white 
background. So this is where I'm not looking to create pictures of things that I recognize like a lion or anything like that, or a zoo or, a, or a, any of these. I'm sticking now with math objects, just one to teach myself how to do it. Because this is a brand new, this is a brand new product. This is just out. I think this is less than a, a two weeks old from Google. And then I, through repeated, repeated flaws and mistakes, I found out that you go to www.google.com, search images, and then it gives you a text to image prompt. Here you can see the objects I've been making. I create a small glass sphere with low light from the front left and a white background. Yeah. That's what I make. The image on the left is what shows up as it's generating and start simple. Don't get too complex because it will error out without much explanation of what caused the problems. So I thought these were quite sophisticated objects. Uh, some of them that I produced have reflections on the interior of them. And then I, here's, and when I clicked on one of the objects, it allows you to enlarge it. It on the right side brings up the prompt. It has this little pen symbol that allows you to edit the prompt. You can regenerate the images. You can export download, you can send it to Google Drive, excuse me. You can respond the back feedback to the AI. And this is some examples. You can see some of the reflections in the globes, in the glass items. And that is on a browser on and I only did it on a Mac, but I am I feel comfortable in saying that this will be similar on a Windows computer. I hope it works for you. It uh, Try three or four different iterations if it doesn't work. But I've tested this, I would say, 10 times. And then this appears to be the solution. Now I'm going to look at Google search experience on Android. If you use Android phones, it works on Android. I don't, I tried on Apple and it's not doing images. So you use the Google search icon and not the browser. Similar, you get this symbol that it's generating and then it shows up. I created a transparent symbol, cylinder show the whole item on the screen. So it did a, it created it with various backgrounds. So the follow-up question is created on a white background. So here's, here's all of the math formulas. I believe that picture on the right is a three-dimensional calculus shape, then some more shapes, 3D images, and then you can see I had a ball uh, <laughs> um, trying this out with these particular images. And these are uh, trigonometry, calculus, linear algebra. Uh, and there was a lot of mistakes. I just chose, I probably have generated 200 different ones. And these are the more attractive ones. That I, <laughs> and, and some of this is very interesting. You can select out the items in these images in the, on your Google phone. There's a facility in Google phone to select just the image, separate it from the background. So 
let's do let's do a couple examples. Let's see if I can make a fool of myself. I like making a fool of myself. So here we are. Oh, Robert raised his hand. Jim, I just took took a look at my uh, Chrome, and yeah. without doing without doing anything, your your beaker's already on it. So apparently, it's now a default under Windows eleven. Oh well, Windows eleven, yes. They want those people. So I'm just going to type. You can see my browser here. I'm going to type Google. So you see, I've done it a bunch of times. Here's, let's see, notice. It took me to the generation screen. Now, I've already turned it on. Remember, I, I skipped a step just here. Should I do the preliminary step? Yes, I'm gonna, yes. I'm going to go labs. Yes. Dot Google. And here are, here's where you turn it on if you don't have the latest and greatest. You know, the Google is trying to get this in front of people with software that is going to be around for a while. So notice I'm scrolling down. I don't know what project IDX is. I know IDX is index. I don't uh, know with ma what Magic Compose is. I don't know. But then here, notice right here, where it says generating, get started, help generate, help shape the future of information. I'm going to click on get started. And I've turned all these on. And then I'm going to go up here to re reload. After I've clicked, you know, you can, I'm going to, you can click right. these on and off right there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the, yeah. uh, uh, I agree. And then I'm going to, now that it's turned on, I'm going to go to Google, doc, Google, Google, Google. And the beaker shows up indicating that that is loaded within Google. And then I'm going to type at the end of this, I'm going to type search, nope, slash search images. And there it is. I like, see, oh, this is, this is what the, you know, these mathematicians in the 1970s or the 1920s had visions of these things. They couldn't generate them, but they had visions. And the, here's some more of the uh, items that I generated. Let's see if there's any others that are more. These are some of the, you'll see some from aerodynamic shapes. What I started to see was things that are on spaceships. But let's go back and generate my own. Let's see if I'm gonna I'm gonna please create a boho watercolor of 1920s Paris cafe C A F E street scene S C E N E with just a few people on the street in an early morning how's that let's see what this does here it's oh let's take some of it away i have seen in there twice let i'm going to take away some of the, the information generate the scene so jim this is bonnie you're generating from something they already have. It's not like they're creating something that you've <laughs> given them with information. They're not mm -hmm. coming up with a new painting. Yes. Based on I, I believe they are coming up with a new. Uh, that's why you have to put in the please create. I'm going to take out Boho and let's see what happens. No, these are not existing pictures. The, it will at times put them in, but at other times, and I, it's a good question if you're getting that up there. Sometimes it searches for it, and sometimes it creates it. 
I don't fully understand. That was the first part of the presentation in the Google search portion. It uh, there's a way for you to <clears throat> get picture links. Now, rem I'm going to just let this run here and I'll talk in the background. Well, I'm just surprised that they didn't come up with anything, I guess. Oh, it's just too complex. Remember, this is all development. This is all information under development. This is not a finished product. There's a product out there called Mid Journey, Mid Journey, that you pay $20 a month for. That's a finished product. Google's, you're seeing stuff that may not be available for the uh, February class. But here's, I regenerated it. I kind of like these two. I'm going to put this one up there. I like this one. This one's photo. These are, let's look at the, I kind of like that one. Mm -hmm. um, and so now look at over here. I can, I say, oh yeah, this is pretty good. And then I can download it to my computer. Boom, there, it just downloaded it. So then I could take this into PowerPoint and put graphics and, or if I'm an advertising artist, I could put in there, buy my liquor uh, type thing in this particular drawing. So is this um, different in the sense that it doesn't tell you it's AI generated? It's not It's not posting anything in that I'm seeing. Is there a cost, monthly cost for this? No, not yet. Not yet. There is uh, there is no cost to it. You if you went crazy like I did, it will say you've reached your max for the day. Because mm. uh, I went, oh, I went way. Uh, I was, I couldn't sleep. I was so excited. <laughs> they have a fine print at the bottom of their screen. Generative uh, image may display inaccurate, misleading, or offensive images that do not represent Google's view. So this is the cautions and the risks. Remember, we talked about that. So this is and this is available in on Android phones. And the last part of the presentation deals with it. It's two thirty. This is, let's just, in closing, I, I want to do two things. Let's do a, a photo. Please create, please create, I, create a photo realistic, photo realistic image of um, mountains with, people hiking, H-I-K. Uh, and I'm going to put my favorite in bokeh background. Let's see if that causes it to error out. Starts the generation process. And so here, let's, oh my gosh. Which one do you want to look at? Uh, so again, this is, it's got a little bit of a problem in it. It's blurry. Let's look at this one. This one it has a little more refinement to it. Uh, and uh, and you can download these. Notice it has a common feature in these generated images and it doesn't show, it's not showing people's faces. And somewhere we have to really start dealing with the bias the bias of African-American faces are not presented well because they are not in the equitably represented in the corpus of images training the AI, that there's a paucity of images of African-American faces, African faces. So as we're closing, I'm going to do one thing here.